Although 3D Gaussian splatting is an interesting and popular technical topic in computer graphics at the moment, and although we have now several convenient ways to produce Gaussian models, it is worth talking a little about the file sizes as well. How heavy can Gaussian point cloud actually grow, and what are the ways that we can optimize and compress these files to make it easier and faster to share them online? Let's find out. Hello boys and girls, it's Olli here again. This time I decided to take these splats from a slightly more practical point of view and observe the file sizes that are saved from the Gaussian splatting models. As we know, the PLY file has been selected as the main 3D format where point cloud data can be stored nowadays. The PLY file type itself is actually quite an old 3D file format already, which has mainly contained only basic point cloud data. In its simplest form, it contained the 3D coordinates of the points and the RGB color values. But now, when we produce Gaussian splatting models, a lot of more parameters are recorded in the PLY file. Therefore, when we add all these parameters together for millions of individual splats, file sizes can become significantly larger compared to traditional polygon-based 3D models. Although I don't see the comparison to traditional 3D models as very fair, because polygon models have been around us for a very long time, and their textures and mesh structures differ significantly from the Gaussian splatting technique, so the optimization and compression possibilities between these 3D formats are different. But there is a lot of room for reducing the PLY file size. Let's take a look what is the basic file size for a regular Gaussian splatting model that we can train out from PostSat program. Here I have this kind of an interior model, which I scanned in IKEA with my iPhone. This Gaussian model is trained from 214 images to 30k iteration steps, and it contains a total of 3 million splats. And when I export the PLY file out of this model, I'll get file with a total size of 708 megabytes. I have to admit, it's pretty heavy. It's heavy if our goal is to publish it in the web and share it through the web browser. So that's why we need to search what possibilities we have to optimize and reduce the file size. Since the PostSat program has now the option to use the so-called MCMC method, it gives us a possibility to determine how many splats the Gaussian model produces in maximum. So I can now train this IKEA room model from the start again and make this value to be something much smaller than the default 3 million splats. Let's enter something like 1.2 million which is 1200k splats here. And I let it run to the default 30k iteration steps. When the process is ready, I can take a look and notice that this room looks pretty much the same as the previous one. It is overall same accuracy level, even though the info tab tells us now that the model contains only 1.2 million splats. But we can still tweak this a bit and remove unnecessary points. Let me show you one trick. When we use the MCMC method, we have to remember that this option produces a huge amount of invisible splats outside the model area. So let's zoom out quite a bit so that we can see the main splats of this model. Then we can choose this selection circle tool and paint this heap inside which most of our model is. Then when I press this invert selection button, 
it will reveal all the hidden splats around the main model. And there are quite a lot of them. These are completely useless splats and can be deleted by pressing the Delete Selected Splats button. And just to be sure that we really get rid of all of those hidden floaters, remember to repeat this cleaning procedure also from another angle. Using the MCMC method with lower maximum splat readings and cleaning the hidden floaters is a very concrete way to optimize the Gaussian splatting models. And now, when we save this IKEA room model and export the file into the PLY format, we get file size, which is total of 279 megabytes. This is already a pretty good reduction value, and it is roughly 2.5 times smaller than the original. It still can be quite a heavy file for a 3D model, but in terms of its content, it is already significantly better for uploading to the web. But then let's look at another type of Gaussian splatting model. Here I have a synthetic 3D Gaussian model of a bee insect. Synthetic here means that its source is pre-made digital 3D model and it has been converted to Gaussian splatting form from pre-rendered images. As source images, PNG sequences with an alpha channel has been used, where the shape of the object has been accurately extracted from its background. The Gaussian splatting model produced in this way is fundamentally very clean and does not form floating artifacts. But since we use the MCMC method to create this model, it doesn't mean that the hidden splat wouldn't still form around the model. So the same cleaning process must be done for this synthetic model as well. But the number of hidden splats decreases significantly the further the iteration steps go. For example, when I let this develop up to 60k step to get enough details in insects' wings and eyes, I can no longer find hardly any hidden splats in the empty space around the model. So larger number of iteration steps affects to the end result and self-optimization algorithm of Gaussian splatting process can also clean the model and make it very pure and accurate at the end. But what is the file size with this synthetic model then? I used the same principles and values as in the previous IKEA room model, but here there are twice as many iteration steps. So the size of the file turned out to be a total of 283 megabytes. So these example PLY files are roughly the same size, although their content is very different and are produced in completely different ways. And the determining factor here is this setting where we can set the maximum number of splats. But then let's explore some compression options. Currently, we don't have many ways to compress PLY files using available application or services. Super Splat Editor on the web is one easy way to try to compress PLY files. But when we load the Gaussian splatting model into the Super Splat and use the export option there to make a compressed version of the file, the file size will be significantly reduced. It turns into a very low file size, which is only 18 megabytes in total. But we need to understand what is really happening in this compression. When we now upload this reduced file back to SuperSpat, we notice that the model has become very flat and something strange has happened to its quality. It doesn't look as good as the original anymore. This is because SuperSplat compression function has completely removed the so-called spherical harmonics data from the entire model. The spherical harmonics feature is exactly what makes the Gaussian splatting model high quality, because it stores light values for each Gaussians. 
These are created in a sophisticated way in the point cloud, where the shades of lights and realistic diffusion effect are layered into each Gaussian in three different degrees. And if we load back to the original file, in the model settings we can play with this slider and see how each of these degrees affect the appearance of the Gaussian splitting model. When the spherical harmonic degrees is turned to zero, we can see that it looks exactly as flat as the compressed file was. And when this degree is turned to value 3, the model is in its highest quality and the shading and lightning condition looks much better. So it is understandable that if we are chasing the smallest possible file size, then we have to compromise on the quality and use the compression, and then we lose what is stored in spherical harmonics data. If we don't want to compromise on the quality, then the compression should not be done. But this may not always be in our control. For example, if we want to use the Spline 3D editor service to publish Gaussian splatting models online, we encounter a similar problem there. When we upload our PLY file to the Spline editor and check it in there, we notice that it looks just as flat again. This means that Spline automatically uses its own compression method and imports the model directly without spherical harmonics data. You can't influence the setting in any way and it won't help even if you upload a suitable sized and well optimized file there. Spline does this correction for all Gaussian splatting models that are transferred there. It's a bit sad since the Spline is a very versatile 3D web editor and with it there is so many options to publish and share 3D stuff in the web. I hope that in the future Spline service will fix this issue and allow users to upload Gaussian splatting models also with full spherical harmonics data. While waiting for that, I want to share some good news regarding the Polycam service. A new feature has recently been added to the Polycam service, which gives you the opportunity to upload your own PLY files into it and use Polycam's relatively good own Gaussian model viewer. This is a very welcome new feature and best of all, Polycam's viewer is able to display Gaussian splatting models at their best quality, including all spherical harmonics data. Through the service, it is now very easy to share Gaussian models for your friends or clients to see via web links. You can also easily customize the viewer by chasing the background color. I really like this new feature and the fact that Polycam offers now the hosting also for the other Gaussian splatting models than only for those that are produced through Polycam's own Gaussian splatting creation service. Okay then, I hope this video gave you now some valuable information about which component the Gaussian splitting file sizes are made and how we can affect to them by using these tools that we have available at the moment. You should also have now some idea what you need to do if you want to share these PLY files online. If you are interested about these synthetic Gaussian splatting models which I have shown here and want to know how they are made, I recommend to check out my camera array tool, which I have developed for Blender. This add-on helps you to render images out from regular 3D models, which you can then convert to Gaussian format in PostChart program. Add-on is available in my Gumroad store. I will also add links of these models in Polycam, so check the description and test how they run in your web browser. As always, hit the like button if you liked this video, and remember to subscribe to my channel. I will continue to explore these file sizes and sharing opportunities. Until the next time, goodbye.